So, and you should have gotten um, slides in the updated email, but we will be uh, in the updated invitation, but we will be <clears throat> sharing our screen. So Rob, if you want to take it away, we can get started. Absolutely. So uh, are you guys able to see the screen now or are you following along um, separately? I don't see the screen. OK. I see the screen, but there's nothing on it yet other than just saying it's the recording has started. OK. Let me see. The PowerPoint's not there yet. But it is. It's coming, coming up. up. There, there it is. You got it. Here we are. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Absolutely. So welcome everyone to the 2021 Audiology QCDR webinar. Uh, as we go on throughout this presentation, please feel free to ask questions um, and we can certainly help field them or at the end with time permitting. But other than that, let's go into the agenda. So uh, at first, I'll just be introducing myself and Saritha will as well. And then we will be going into the audiology QCDR. And then on to uh, what it means in terms of 2021's MIPS reporting for audiologists and going over what the differences from 2020 into 2021 are as well as uh, going over a demonstration of how MIPS Pro, our system, works. So as for introductions, uh, my name is Rob Stout. I will be leading the sales effort from the Healthmonic side. And I'm not sure if Saritha had already introduced herself to the whole group, um, but Saritha, if you want to give your introduction. Yes, um, my name is Saritha Curry, and I'm the Vice President of Customer Success here at Healthmonics. I'm also uh, taking on the audiology QCDR basically as the account manager associated um, with this QCDR. Uh, so I'm happy to answer um, any questions uh, related to the QCDR, uh, but I'm also the customer side contact. So when um, when folks are customers, I will be organizing the customer experience. Thank you, Saritha. So a little overview as to what we do and what Healthmonics is passionate about. Um, our three main tenets are achieving in quality reporting, improving today's healthcare, and creating rewarding and easy technology. We know that MIPS is a very large uh, program with a lot of moving pieces. So what MIPS Pro tries to do is try to be a little bit of a Tylenol for the headache and make it uh, a lot easier for you. What's to up, go Sandra? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That was just not on mute. Sorry. Oh, um, but our technology is uh, supposed to help make things a lot easier in terms of the reporting and also improve the uh, delivery of the quality of care within healthcare. So what we can offer is uh, a lot of different resources and the Healthmonics Advisor, which is our Healthmonics blog, um, this provides industry news and quality reporting advice. So some of the examples of the blogs that we've had come out recently um, had to do with how COVID is impacting MIPS in the large scale uh, landscape, as well as we have a new blog coming out about the differences of 2021's reporting versus 2020 what it means for uh, each of the customers and how we can help you. We also have the MIPS Learning Center. Uh, this is updated annually and covers everything you need to know about MIPS reporting in 2021 from eligibility to predicting the revenue impact. We do also have uh, much more resources available on our website. And in terms of 
the sales uh, perspective for this QCDR, we have four of our main tenants here. So the first one is to confidently integrate your technology with MIPS Pro. So that means we do work with any EHR, practice management, or revenue cycle management program that uses advanced code mapping. Uh, some examples of EHR companies that we work with are um, the biggest fish in the sea, which is Epic, Cerner's, but all the way down to uh, smaller EHRs that are for individual specialties. We are able to work with all of that to integrate your data in a safe and timely manner. The second tenant is to gain real-time access to patient provider and measured dashboards. Uh, this will enable targeted changes instantly to your workflows or measure calculations, and this can greatly impact your overall MIPS score. Our third tenant is to maximize your score by leveraging easy to navigate submission tools. Uh, this would allow you to choose group or individual reporting at submission and pick your best measures to submit in order to achieve that score. And not to worry, our support team uh, will be able to walk with you from every single step from choosing measures all the way to submitting that to the CMS. And then our fourth tenant is drilling into individual patient providers and MIPS measures. So this will empower you to attack gaps in care by identifying outlier providers, underserved patient populations, and incorrect measure workflows. And like I said, I will be leading the sales effort on the HealthMonic side. So any questions that you have uh, in the purchasing process or everything leading up to the sales process, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, that number on the screen is my direct line or feel free to send me an email. Um, but everything after the purchase will be handled by our fantastic support team, which Saritha will be talking about in the next slide. So Saritha, I don't know if you want me to stop sharing my screen at this point. No, you can keep the share. I think that'll that'll be just fine. OK. OK. All right, so on the next slide. Um, so in terms of Health Monix customer support, we pride ourselves on offering um, really omnichannel support. So you can call, email, or chat us um, online from 8 to 6, um, Monday through Friday. Uh, so for audiologists specifically, we'll establish you know, a special uh, email address that identifies these users as coming in for audiology. Uh, they don't have to use the email address, uh, but that is uh, something that we will make available in our uh, service um, materials. So we'll, we'll have branded service materials specifically oriented towards uh, audiologists. Do you want to head to the next slide, Rob? Sure. Um, so we offer a number of things that help people learn um, MIPS and MIPS Pro at their own pace. There is a quality webinar curriculum that takes you through uh, starting with uh, measure selection and takes you all the way through performance and scoring in terms of teaching you both the MIPS rules and the MIPS Pro rules. Um, we also have a series of guided tutorials that are available in the application to help you do anything from adding a visit to measure selection uh, and filling out uh, different pages in the site. We have a monthly newsletter that keeps you up to date on any changes again from the MIPS program or uh, MIPS Pro, uh, like new features and um, updates to the system. Uh, so that monthly newsletter will also say remind folks of important deadlines that are coming up, whether that's again new, new material from CMS or the next reporting year uh, deadline has uh, started or submission has started, something like that. Um, and finally, we have what we call the Health Monix Help Desk, which is a series of Help Desk articles 
that really run the gamut from uh, like strategy articles, how do you make the best, how do you get the best score uh, using MIPS Pro to um, how a certain feature on uh, MIPS Pro works. So we've got a fairly extensive help desk article at this point that's always available for folks um, to either enrich their knowledge or learn how to do something for the first time. All right, so getting into uh, more specifics on how um, our audiology QCDR is going to work this year, uh, we'll take the next um, few slides of the presentation. And I'd say, especially here, if you have questions on anything, please, uh, please interrupt me and I'm happy to answer those as uh, we go along. Um, but hopefully this will give you a a good sense of what we're doing and how we're getting started with uh, the audiology QCR this year. Okay, go to the next slide. All right, getting started. So uh, there are a number of things that are available now to get started for 2021, and uh, we've got um, even more things coming soon, either in the next couple of weeks or just starting right at uh, January 2nd. So in terms of what's available now, um, this very day, uh, you can log on to the uh, dedicated audiology application, and that's the, the URL for that is audiology.mips.healthmonics.com. This is the, we call them program IDs, but um, this is the application site uh, that Rob will be demoing later in the presentation. So you'll see for uh, yourself um, what it what it looks like, um, but it is just the, the the same program that we use for our other specialties, but it's been revised a little bit for the audiology experience. Um, so right now you can uh, purchase for 2021 um, and you can get your practice set up for 2021. Um, that is it in terms of what is currently available. Um, the audiology measures themselves we've actually completed for 2021, but um, our, the quality performance category isn't available yet, so you can't use them yet. So in terms of the things that are coming soon, um, our dedicated marketing site specifically for audiologists is coming soon, uh, beginning of January. Um, we're going to be making available tracking only licenses, which I am going to talk about in a later slide, but basically that is a way that a non-MIPS eligible clinician could still participate with these measures. Um, we anticipate quality performance category data entry will be available on January 2nd. Improvement activities, which is the other performance category that audiologists can report, will be available later in Q1. Um, like I said before, the approved 2021 audiology QCDR measures will be available as soon as the quality performance category is available. And we anticipate um, the audiology measure set, which is uh, the other sort of recommended set of measures, both by Healthmonics recommended and CMS, and a, and a special set that audiologists can um, report um, that will be available no later than the end of Q1, but likely much sooner. So we should be up and running in pretty short order for 2021 come January. We can go to the next slide. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, a slide, and although we've already talked a little bit about the audiology QCDR measures approved uh, for this year. Um, so our first four measures uh, were approved uh, by CMS uh, this year. The fifth one was not, um, but the plan is that we would like to gather uh, more data on this measure because CMS indicated that if we could demonstrate uh, with more data that there was in fact a, a gap in performance here, they would they could be potentially be interested in approving this uh, measure for a future performance year. Uh, so the hope is to track data related to this measure in uh, 2021. 
uh, still working out some of the details on that, but that is the hope here. Um, we can go to the next slide. Uh, the next slide is our, this is a list of the audiology measure set based on 2020 data. So we do still have to go in and update this uh, for uh, 2021. The 2021 final rule did finally come out, even though it's a little bit late this year. Um, so this is a set of measures that uh, providers could report um, a six of apart from the audiology QCDR measures that we have uh, jointly developed. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, the tracking only license. So uh, this is an option that we like to make available for uh, QCDR participants. Um, so especially for audiologists where there are still a fair number of non-MIPS eligible clinicians, we want to make uh, an available uh, for folks who do not want to submit their data even for just performance feedback purposes to CMS, um, we would like to make available a way for them to track quality data, especially on the QCDR measures. So um, purchasing a license, uh, a tracking only license with us would mean that the participant would have access to uh, basically the performance tools of MIPS Pro, but not the scoring and submission tools of MIPS Pro. Um, so they could, um, so once you enter data into the system, it's it's there, it's there until you, you uh, delete it. So at any time you could choose to, you know, submit data to CMS, you could just by upgrading um, your license uh, and, and reporting, um, as you probably know, uh, clinicians who are not MIPS eligible do have a choice about su submitting data to CMS. Uh, they can submit data for performance feedback only. They won't be eligible for a payment adjustment if they do that, but they can do that for if they just want uh, feedback on their uh, performance data. So we'll, we're planning on making um, this way of reporting available on the audiology site as well and um, hoping to see people participate in tracking quality data for those measures even if they are not planning on submitting that data to CMS. All right. In terms of um, entering data, um, there's a couple of different ways that you can enter data into the QCDR. Um, you can do it manually or you can purchase a data integration license. Typically, we recommend that people go the data integration route. Um, usually, EHRs, billing systems, practice management, you have access to some form of technology that will at least help you get some of the data into the system, if not all of it. Um, but there are options here. So in terms of uh, manually entering data, um, you can manually add and edit individual patients and visits. This mode does not require any configuration from an EHR or from any form of tech of IT really. Um, and you don't even need like the codes associated with the measures. You can really just answer questions associated with the measures. Uh, the cons for this is really um, as the as the MIPS program has advanced, MIPS Pro has optimized for spreadsheet upload, um, not manual entry, and this is uh, obviously a slower and more um, time-consuming way of entering data. But it is still possible for folks who um, don't want to um, do it with data integration, and we definitely have manual users who use MIPS Pro every year. Uh, with the data integration license, you can quickly add and edit patients and visits in bulk. Um, so it is a pretty flexible tool that really will use any existing measured data that's captured by an export um, from an EHR or billing data or practice management if it's in the right format. Um, and we have plenty of uh, materials to help folks get their um, data in the right format. They can take it back to their um, EHRs um, and uh, 
uh, this is, uh, you know, the vast majority of our clients will purchase a, a data integration license and at least do some amount of entering either patient data or patient and visit data uh, through, typically through a spreadsheet upload from Excel. Um, the cons of this, it, it does require a little bit of getting used to, it requires a little bit of technical uh, proficiency uh, to work with some of the data categories that the system is expecting. And it definitely works best with an EHR or um, billing system that's already configured for MIPS reporting. Um, so if you have some idea what, if your EHR technical solution has some idea of what um, MIPS is, that is uh, really uh, paving, that's the easy ex experience for folks uh, who are reporting. All righty. All right, Rob, that is you. Yes, sorry, I was on mute, so I had to go back uh, back to sharing my screen. Are, are you guys OK to, to see it again now? Yes, I see your screen. OK. So in terms of 2021, um, just a general overview as to what MIPS is. MIPS stands for the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System that consists of four different uh, categories, and they are quality improvement activities, promoting interoperability, and cost. As you can see on the right-hand side, uh, how the breakdown of the weighting works for each category. This is just the general overview of MIPS. So for audiology, uh, promoting interoperability and cost will not be a part of 2021, as you will see in this graphic. So on the right is the standard MIPS reporter, and on the left is uh, what the weighting will look like for audiologists. So 85% of it is quality and 15% is improvement activities. So quality is extremely, extremely crucial, especially in 2021. Um, and that's where we are going to be focusing a lot of our time during the demonstration, because that's where most of your time on MIPS Pro is going to be spent in, which is the quality portion rather than improvement activities. And then in terms of who is eligible for MIPS reporting in 2021, um, you won't be considered eligible if you are newly enrolled in Medicare or if you don't meet the uh, low volume threshold. So in order to be eligible, you would have to bill for 90,000 or more in Medicare Part B charges or have uh, over 200 Medicare patients or 200 covered professional services. Also, if you are already enrolled in an advanced APM, uh, you would not be eligible for MIPS in 2021. And this slide will go over what the um, the payment adjustment is after two years. So right now we're in 2020. That's the performance year that we're in. You would see a an adjustment to your payments in 2022. So this is two years retroactively that it gets applied. Um, and as you can see on the screen, this shows you how much the incentive is jumping every single year from 2017 to 2020. The uh, highest potential adjustment you could get has already gone up from 4 to 9%, but that also means that the penalty is getting higher and higher too. So for 2021, if you don't reach 60 points, um, it could be as low as a negative 9% adjustment on your 2022 bills. 
And this is the breakdown of the final scores impact. Um, this is looking at 2020 right now. So in 2021, this section should say zero to 59 points. So not participating in the quality payment program or a low MIPS final score would result in up to a 9% penalty. And this is for zero to 59 points in 2021. In this category in the middle here from 60 to 84 points would be achieving a moderate MIPS final score and you would avoid the penalty and you might see some incentive uh, two years later. So in your 2023 uh, adjustments, you would see that. And then over 85 points, that's where you could be eligible for the highest 9% payout um, all the way up to the exceptional performance bonus of up to 10%. So the quality category for 2021, um, as we did say before, this will be 85%. And this is done over a 12 month period. So that's where you can gather all of your data in that calendar year. Um, you must retain 70% data completeness. So that means that you must report on 70% of all of your eligible patients for each measure. Um, and some other things that were happening in quality for 2021, 11 quality measures were removed and 113 quality measures were uh, substantially edited in some type of way. Um, there are around 222 measures that were available last year. So I know the 113 looks like a very big number, but um, those measures are still there just with some changes. And like we said, our support team are just fantastic and they're measures experts and they'll be able to help you out with any questions that you would have. Going into improvement activities, um, always often referred to as IA. This will account for 15% of your total score. Um, there wasn't that many changes that happened from 2020 going into 2021. They modified to existing improvement activities, um, but most of the, the changes are just having to do with language surrounding COVID-19. Um, they are continuing that improvement activity. As you could imagine, it was a very popular one in 2020, but uh, they did also get rid of one improvement activity. So other than that, uh, I am going to dive into the product demonstration. I'm going to quit sharing my screen for a second so I can bring it up. Just need to log in quickly. And are you guys able to see the screen again? Yes. yes. Great. So this is just a general overview of uh, what MIPS Pro looks like when you log in. Um, this is just on the general MIPS site, and this is for 2020's data. Uh, not to worry, 2021 is coming soon. But for the purposes of this demo, this is just the, uh, the general overview of what it would look like. If you were a customer for more than one year, you would be able to toggle in between the years up here. But for this page, uh, all you really need to know is this button to the dashboard will take you in. So what it will look like for audiologists is promoting interoperability and cost will just be blurred out. So you would only have quality improvement activities and a complex patient bonus. 
And like I said before, uh, I'm going to spend most of the time in quality. The IA page does look exactly the same as quality. If we have time at the end, I can certainly go into that. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, we will focus mostly on quality. And when you go in, the way our tool works is like reading a book, uh, works from left to right, top to bottom. So you would have to start off by selecting your measures. And before I go in, uh, you can see these green check marks on the side. It will not allow you to go to electronic reporting without having my measures completed first. So it it does uh, kind of keep you on track with everything in that regard. But going into the measures, in the right hand side, it will let you know if you have satisfied the minimum of six measures. Uh, right now we have 12. And it will uh, will make sure that you know if you've satisfied the outcome or high priority measure. So you must select either one outcome or one high priority measure. You will see when we go into the measure selection that you are able to determine which measures are uh, outcome or high priority. So these are all of the measures that we had available for 2020. This, uh, the filtering on the left here allows you to search by a, a bunch of different uh, titles. You can look, search for the title itself. So measure 113, I could search that. Uh, codes, if you have a commonly built code that would uh, be connected to one of these measures. You could just type in that code, see all the measures that connect to that. And if that's a very commonly used code for you, you might want to select these measures as you'll have the most data on that. But it will also let you select by the CMS's measure set. So you can search by audiology. And eight different measures will come up that are very, very related to the audiology field. Um, most of these would probably be measures that uh, you would find some interest in. And what it looks like in each of these measures descriptions, it will tell you if it is high priority or outcome. And if the measure is topped out. So when you click on it, this is just the description and instructions for each of the measures. Uh, the most important thing from this page is the first sentence under instructions where you see the underline uh, and bolded text. And that's just to let you know what the reporting frequency is. That is definitely the most important part of the measure instructions. Going down further, you can just see the decile breakdown for how the scoring works for this measure, as well as the numerator and denom denominator codes that make up this measure itself. So what you're seeing here are CPT or HICPIC codes. And the way that I like to think about the numerator and denominator is the numerator is how well you performed and the denominator is who was eligible for that measure. But like I said, you can also search by high pri priority or outcome measures here. And uh, this is the same box as before, just letting you know that you have selected um, the minimum amount of measures and high priority. And that is mostly the measure selection. So if you are having any trouble with measure selection, um, like I said, our support team is uh, able to help you out, help you select measures that would be the best for each practice. Um, going into electronic reporting, based upon the measures that you've selected, you just 
select yes or no as to if you electronically reported them. That's all that section is very, very simple. As well as mandated measures, just a page to say that you have read it. And then you are good to go to data entry. So I believe that Saritha had touched upon this earlier. Um, we do suggest that data integration is probably the most efficient strategy. Uh, it does cost a bit more money, but this gives you the ability to upload spreadsheets of data. So if you are able to um, go to whoever handles your billing or your EHR and ask them if they are able to produce the report that we need, um, that makes it a lot easier, takes a lot of the time and effort out of manually inputting data. But all it would look like is dragging and dropping a file right here onto the site. And based upon the codes that are in that data, they respond to the measures that you've previously selected and auto populates instantly. So you will see your results in real time. If you wanted to manually enter visits or patients, you would need a unique identifier for your patient, their date of birth and gender, and then you would set them up as a patient and you would be able to uh, upload your visits as well. So in one of the tenants of uh, from the sales approach that we have, you I, I was talking about the ability to identify gaps in care. I'm sorry about this. I just need to get back on track. OK. So when you do upload this will keep track of how well you are doing in each measure um, for number 47 here you can see that we are working at a 91.9 percent uh, performance rate for this measure there were 572 total instances 571 complete 525 met out of that 572 and for 46 not met so that is why we have the score of 91.94 and not 100%. If you wanted to look at it from the decile range, this will just graphically represent the point breakdown for each of these quality measures. And as you can see for this one, we are here in decile six, um, giving us six points for landing within the 82 0.84% to 98%. So this is a tougher measure. Uh, the really good measures are ones like this, where decile eight is all the way down from 34 to 43% for this measure, just meaning it's a little bit tougher to score for these. So when you do well, um, it, it just is better overall for you. And this is the NPI analysis. So for each of these measures, it can break down how well each of your providers are performing. So you can see, you can ask the question why this provider is only at 88.57% when it seems like most of the other providers are above 91%. You would be able to email this report directly to them to just help uh, help drill down into why your MIP score is what it is. And then each of these are also hyperlinks that take you into a page where you could really start to identify the gaps in care between each visit. So I, I know this page does look a little overwhelming. Uh, down here on the left is a legend to let you know what each symbol means. So incomplete, ineligible, excluded, not met, or met. 
And basically, we just want those green check marks for as much as possible. But this would allow you to look at each visit and say, why was measure 111 um, incomplete for this measure or for this patient during this visit when all the other measures were touched on? So this just allows you to really drill down into your MIP score and analyze everything that happened from a visit standpoint to understand where you could uh, do better and improve your MIPS care. So other than that, that is most of quality. I will go into the quality points uh, just real quick here at the end. So you, if you wanted, you could select every single measure at the start, and then we would break down what your top six measures are based upon the predicted decile point, points. Um, this is just letting you know what the top six are. These are the only six that you should be reporting in order to get the highest score possible. And we will take into account the uh, bonus points as well. So that is most of quality. Um, Saritha, I'm not sure if you wanted me to go into IA right now, uh, but like I said, that does look exactly like quality. Uh, maybe the, the introductory survey, Rob, might be helpful to go over in a, just a couple of minutes. Um, but we could stop for questions first. Sure. <laughs> that works for me. OK. Um, so that is a good summary of the quality performance category. We'll stop right now and just to see if there's any questions about uh, this demo or anything in the quality performance category you would like to know how it works on the system. Um, and if there aren't any questions, we will do a couple minutes on IA. Okay. Alrighty. I'd say we've got a couple minutes for IA then. Okay. Okay, so improvement activities is uh, very, very, very similar. It works the same way where it reads left to right, top to bottom, won't allow you to go on without getting these green check marks. Uh, the first part, just a simple, very simple overview to say you've read it lets you know that the improvement activities uh, are 90 day periods where you can gather the information for that activity. And for selecting IA or for selecting improvement activities, um, and this is 2020, the points needed were 40 points. So it tells you what the weight weighting is right here. So th this one is worth 20. 20 and 10 are what you'll see for most of them. And it looks very, very similar to like in quality where it will give you a description. Let you know the length is pretty much always going to be 90 days. But this is uh, a 20 point. All you have to do is select enough to get up to 40 points. And you can search here by activity subcategory and searching by the weight is uh, also a, a good way to go about it because having at least one improvement activity is it will go a long way, especially going into 2021 as well. But other than that, that is pretty much exactly um, exactly like quality, the way that IA works. Saritha, I'm not sure if you wanted to to talk more about the the tracking and the testing, but um, 
that's mostly all all IA. Yeah, actually, if you go back to the measures tab, Rob, sure. and click on the determined reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other helpful part about uh, the IA performance category setup is just that there is a uh, determination of activity point survey in the beginning that helps you understand if you're in a special uh, status where you don't need to report 40 points, you might need to report 20. So for instance, if you're in a group with 15 or fewer participants, that cuts the amount of points that are required in half. Um, so actually, Rob, do you mind just toggling that first question to yes? Yeah. And no we'll problem. see the um, points drop to 20. Um, and then that way in, your, in the measure, measure selection phase, you would see um, that you only needed say uh, two meet, um, medium weight activities instead of uh, instead of uh, four. Right, so and that's, that's a great a point. Handy thing that does math for you, <laughs> so you don't have to. Yes, and IA uh, we we suggested for everyone. It it tends to be an easier way to get 15 points and really help your overall MIP score. Um, going into 2021, seeing that they push the minimum threshold up to 60 points. IA is going to be uh, very, very vital, but it is just an easier 15 points. Uh, so so definitely, definitely worth looking at. And thank you, Sarita, for pointing that out. My pleasure. So if there aren't any more questions on IA or quality. Um, do you think it's OK for me to stop, to stop sharing my screen now? Yeah, I think that's OK. Um, and actually, I'll share the last slide of the presentation just to talk uh, really quickly about the resources that we have for um, 2021. One second for audiology participants. OK, so this is just a, a our, the last slide of our presentation um, where there's a list of the recommended resources for our audiologists for 2021 20, reporting. This will be available to our customer support team, to the sales team. Um, you can find it, most of these things, on our uh, help desk website at any time. Uh, so there will be a 2021 um, MITS Pro account guide that's currently being updated from the 2021 rule release uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, we'll have an introduction letter specifically for audiologists with our support team that outlines just the streamlined way audiologists can report through the QCDR. Um, there is a quality data integration guide that walks that through that's helpful for you know a technological resource um, if you have one. Um, we do have dedicated resource to explain how to complete incomplete visits with the gaps in care report uh, that Rob was talking about. Um, and then finally, there's links to the quality web webinar curriculum that will be updated for 2021 uh, next year, more like the April timeline when we're uh, focused on 2021 20, reporting rather than 2020 reporting. And there is a list of quality system tutorials that you can also access. So um, the, the, the uh, lines with links are available now, and then the first two will be available um, in early 2021. This was great, um, really impressive. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Hope it was helpful. Do you have any of the pricing structures available yet, or that's what you're developing still? Uh, we do have some of the pricing set. That can be um, a piece that I can send out to you later, um, later this week. OK. An excellent question. <laughs> 
I think it's good when you mentioned that you were putting something together for people who weren't eligible, since that's most of our membership. Um, <laughs> they want to track and practice um, and see where they're falling um, for future and, and collecting data on the measures. Yes, um, and that's definitely something we'll be intentionally pursuing um, to make sure that we really have the data set that we need uh, for moving forward. Because I think uh, CMS has raised the requirements for um, data feedback, I suppose, for the QCDR measures in particular. So they really scrutinize those to make sure that there aren't duplicate measures out there and that the measures that are out there are really the best version of the measures that are available. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? I'm sure if you think of some afterwards, you can just reply all on the email. Yep, absolutely. Saritha and Rob can get us the information, but that was very timely. Um, so we're done right at, I guess, 9.58 Eastern. So all right, well, thank you all for coming. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. This thank is the Thank you, everyone. All right. Well, I hope Thank everyone you. has a great rest of their Monday. You, Thank too. you. you too. Thanks, Healthmonics. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a great day. You, you too. too. Bye.